Good evening, folks. My name is Jacques Duplessis, and I am going to spend the next hour with you doing some statistical reasoning. Before I do that, folks, let's just remind ourselves this show would not have been possible without the sponsorship of Liberty. So a big shout out to Liberty for their generous sponsorship of our show here uh, on the Tenfold platform. Okay, folks, let's have a look. The first question is on the screen. The question says, the cumulative frequency graph, now we know a cumulative frequency graph is an ogive. In Afrikaans, they call it an ogif. First time I hear that word, ogif. Okay, so it's an ogive, it's drawn below, and shows the total number, this is important, the total number of food items ordered from a menu over a period of an hour. Okay, so my vertical axis represents, the traditional y-axis represents the total number of food items ordered from the menu, and then the horizontal axis represents the time. So this is the traditional x-axis, which represents time for us. Okay, so if we look at this graph, it's anchored at 0. At 10, it looks like it's going to be at 12. 20 at 30, 30 we'll have to draw our lines across but it looks like 78 and it finishes after 60 minutes, in other words this period of an hour with 140 items ordered off this menu in the hour. And that is our first question, look at what they're asking us, they say write down the total number of food items, so the total number of food items ordered from the menu in this hour. Now folks, the hour started at naught, it finished at 60. The cumulative frequency is what's lying on the vertical axis. So that represents the total number of items ordered and you can see it finishes right here at the top with 140 items. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. So I'm just going to answer that here. Yeah, this is 140 items for one mark. Okay, now the next question is asking us about the modal class of this data. Now that is where most, the, the period on this graph, where most of the sales happened. Okay, so let's have a look. Our graph has been um, subdivided into intervals of 10 minutes. Over here, the growth was 12 items were sold. The next 10 minutes, we sold an additional few items to reach a cumulative amount of 30. Okay, but we can see, if we look at the top of this graph, for this section here, now I've drawn these blue, gra blue lines here for us, up to bring them in, for the section from there, um, up to, let me find another blue line, up to where the next point goes through. That is the section where most of the sales happened. The biggest portion of the graph lies over there, folks. So that is what we're looking for. That is our modal class. The, the interval where most of the sales happened. Now, if we look at this, it starts at 30. Um, the number of sales starts at 30, and it looks like it finishes at 78. So let's just see what they want. They don't want the number of sales. They're only looking for the modal class. Now, what we'll see, it's over here between 20 and 30. Now, folks, there's not clarity here which point belongs where. So in other words, is 20 included in the next interval or in the previous interval? We don't know. That information is usually given to you in a table. Okay, we don't know about it here, so we are going to accept both answers. So modal class lies between the, the x values, or the t values, I should actually say, bigger and equal to 20, but smaller than 30, or I can go for 20, x is strictly bigger than 20, and less than equal to 30. Any one of those two answers will be accepted as correct. And you can see, folks, it's for one mark. Remember, 
it is the interval on the graph where the most rapid growth happened. Gives us our modal class here. Okay, the next question. How long did it take? So how long is the time that we're looking for? Did it take to order the first 30 food items? Now folks, remember this is the how long axis, the horizontal. So the first 30 food items is a vertical value that I'm looking for. And once I've got that vertical value in place, I bring it down to read off the horizontal value. It's as simple as that. Let me use the lines that I've put on here for us. So I'm looking at the question said, let me just go back. How long did it take to order the first 30 food items? And it is this line that runs over here. My first 30 food items was ordered. If I bring this line down, we can see it goes to 20. Okay, so my first 30, I'm just going to remove these lines, was ordered in the first 20 minutes. And we can answer that for the, the next mark that they are going to give us. So how many food items was, oh, sorry, how long did it take? It took 20 minutes straight off the graph. Nothing fascinating or interesting there yet. Okay, everything we, we got so far is on the graph. We just need to know where to look for it. Number four, how many food items, this is a Y value I'm looking for, were ordered in, now be careful, in the last 15 minutes. So this time around, time is given, the last 15 minutes. So from 60, I will need to come 15 minutes back and then see where does it cross the ogive because that gives me the number of food items ordered in that interval. So if I go from 60 and I bring down, oops, see, let me just do that with that line. I bring this across, 15, that's 10, 15 lies here right in the middle over there. My line doesn't want to move onto the middle line, but I'll give us a little dot on the graph so we can see where we are. We at this point on our graph. Okay, so that is the last 15 minutes. Now I need to read off. So I bring my horizontal, my ruler, my lines are acting as rulers for me, and I bring it up. It looks like it's on the second last line up there. Now if you look at the scale here, each horizontal line represents two units. So 122, 124, it looks like it. So the number of items that were sold in the last 15 minutes will be 140. I'm going to do it on the side here. 140 is the total amount minus, remember this is for two marks, minus the number that we saw up there, which was 120, it looked like it was 126 actually, not 124. So 126, and the difference between those two is 14. So 14 items was sold in the period of time from there to there. That little bit there represents 14 items items. Okay, now the catch there was the last 15 minutes. So you've got to go to the end and come back 15 minutes, go vertical because the time was given, you're wanting a horizontal answer, you want to know how many items was sold. Okay, the last question, or the second last question, determine the 75th percentile for this data. Now folks, the 75th percentile is the third quartile, okay? It represents three quarters of the data. So they want to know where is the 75th percentile. Now if we look at the total amount that we have, the total is 140. So to find out where one of the percentiles lie, I remember they quartiles. So I divide it by 4. 
Okay, then I have the first 25% of the data. If I multiply that with 3, I have 75% of the data. So I'm then at quartile 3 or the 75th percentile. Now folks, if you do the math there with your calculator, you will see that's 105 items. The result there is the 105 items. That's where our, our 75th percentile lies. We're not finished. We now need to go to 105 items and read off at which time period this happened. So let me take my horizontal line. I go to 105. I hope it's going to take us straight there. 104, 105 is in the middle. It's on, it looks like it is on the two, four. It's right in between those two. So if I come down with a uh, the yeah, 105 items, that's my 75th percentile. That happens, and I bring it down, it happens somewhere around here. Where's my vertical line? I just want to see if I'm very accurate. I'm not. I'm at 115. I wanted to just say, why am I at that same dot? There we go. That's better. So there's 105 items. I come with my vertical line or my ruler. I go down. And it looks like, now I said it looks like, folks, because it depends on how accurate your reading is going to be. We always allow for one up maybe or one down from the actual answer. So this is 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It looks like it happens 37 minutes into the day. So where's the 75th percentile? At 37 minutes. It lies at that point, 105 units were sold from this tuck shop. So you can see the calculation is not that difficult, folks. It's just three quarters of 140 brings us to 105. I go to 105. You must realize all the time this is a Y value and we were looking for a T value. Okay, so you didn't stop here. That's why there's two marks allocated to this question. The next part says, calculate the interquartile range of this data. Now, folks, that is not difficult. I can do this here at the bottom. We have found our quartile to be our first quartile. Quartile 1 is at 35 um, units sold on our diagram. Okay, so it's at 35 units. Quartile 2 will be at then at 70 units. And my third quartile is, as I saw, at 105 units. So what I've got to do now, I have to go to my graph and I've got to read off. Where does this lie on the horizontal axis? These are all Y values. They're verticals. Okay, so this is the first Y value and the second Y value that I'm interested in is quartile 3. Okay, so to, at 35, if I go back to my diagram and I read off at 35, it looks like it's more or less from that line. And if I come down with that, I'm now doing this freehand, it looks like it's going to be 21 for 35. So this point here will be the point uh, 21 and 35. It could be a little bit bigger than 21. It might be 21.5 because it's just off the line. I don't know. But remember, we allow for that little variation in answer. This is about the reasoning that you apply. And as long as you don't get an answer that's on the next page, then you're fine, as long as it's one unit away from the other one. Okay, and we, we had for 105, we had 37 minutes. Okay, we found that one before. So my interquartile range will be the 105, which was 37 minutes, minus the 21 minutes that I have here, and it looks like it is in the region of 
16 minutes. Okay, folks, so everything on statistical reasoning, when you work with a graph like the ogive, you need your ruler. You need to make sure that you place that ruler as straight as you can. Let it run along the grid so that you don't read off your answers incorrectly um, in an exam.